Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 200. Nice big round number. That means we've been doing this. If we've done one twice a month, oh my gosh, I'm trying to do math on a stream and they say don't do that. Yeah, we've been doing this for a few tough. years then, right? Many wow. years. Really? Oh yeah, twice. Yeah. One twice per month, that's 24. Oh my goodness. Right. I'm almost... Wish I hadn't done that. Um, as always, this meeting is being recorded for those of you that aren't with us here right now, halfway through November. Let's talk about what we're talking about today. Um, if you're here, first time, say hi. Jacob said he's going to be stuck in a meeting. He'll show up later if we're still on in a half hour. Um, but if you're here, say hi. Um, we'd love to know yet. Uh, we're going to do triage like we always do. And then we have one more item on the Wix v4 design discussions, uh, the one that I kept moving down. Sean and I had a little time uh, offline to talk about where our uh, wires got crossed and how things were confused. And I think we're on the same page, and we can now discuss about how we want to uh, solve the problem, um, cleanly define the problem, and then how we want to address it. It's a language discussion, so it'll be uh, which element names and attributes do we want floating around the system. So before we get to that, though, first, triage. Bob, you ready? I'm ready. Um, three items, and then there's one magical one that we need to um, talk about. Um, oh, I didn't sort these in reverse order. Um, we'll start at the bottom, work our way up. There's only three. Um, so this is the oldest one. Propose, change, add a custom action, launch condition, handle .NET Core 3.1 and .NET 5.0 runtime checks. This is great. Didn't we have another issue about this? Well, this is a good conversation between Bob and Sean. Yeah, there was another issue tracking this and all kinds of good stuff being discussed about the details and all the challenges that Sean has found um, in attempting to do this and things to watch out for. Um, and then there's some hang up about needing some piece that they have that's some magical piece of code that these people that are Microsoft people have locked up. And I th the question is, we'll take this in four, of course. Um, are we going to bring it 314? Well, there, I, I'd, I'd start with we'd take it in four, probably. Um, the oh, I, the design. Should. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the, so. so and Sean has more context on this, but there are two two related but very distinct issues. This one is essentially about um, being able to detect whether your app is going to run from an MSI and to be able to put up a launch condition to block execution of the MSI. Right. Which is of mild interest. Um, yeah. Sean's original issue is about supporting, uh, be better supporting uh, the redistributable in a bundle, which I think is, of course, more interesting. Yes, I agree with that. To block an MSI. Um, I'm a little concerned about their their proposed approach. Um, it's unlike some anything that we've done in the past, but it's probably it might be the best way of doing it. I'm not entirely convinced of that, though. Well, I'm. I think. Given that they're not on this call, I assume they haven't said hi. Um, probably best to get that in the issue. If there are issues, need to get them in the issue. If there are concerns, we should track them in the issue, so that they're not off building something. Because this is Microsoft; they'll just go off and build it and say, "Here, you can deal with this. Um, you're welcome." Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be like, "Well, that's not exactly the best way to solve this problem um, necessarily. It's only happened to us, you know, two or three times." So. <laughs> really? I don't know, maybe more, but it feels like that. So uh, I guess you and Sean seem to be having a good conversation with them, and I didn't feel the need to butt in. So uh, so four zero. If they do the work, I would we take it three fourteen. I guess we've kind of just been letting that slope slip, but. Uh, <sighs> I didn't put any of the net core packages in there in yeah. 3.14. Right. Is that something we would do? I don't <laughs> don't really want to spend a lot of time back there doing any work. Um, like the, the detection for the packages will require the new functionality that we added in 4. 
right the bundle but, extension yeah that but you can't yeah so so well given this i'm expecting that they're going to say hey we added this to so you can check for msi with the launch condition we're done right that, that seems to be every indication seems to be that's where they're stopping maybe no i i think in this issue they explicitly accepted that they would do the work in four and right but they also wanted in three right but so i i'm i'm certainly you know i won't sign up to put this into three i, I again this issue i don't i don't have a whole lot of i don't care as much about this issue yeah. being able to block an msi because it, you know, the .NET Core runtime isn't installed. I'm like, I, I don't care. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that more people care because, of course, you know, um, one of the nice things about .NET Core is that you can ship your own runtime. So I'm kind of surprised that there's a lot of interest in being able to support the, um, what do they call it, the framework deployment. Um. Yeah, framework dependent. Yeah. Yeah, framework dependent. Framework dependent. But the um and framework isn't at all overloaded. <laughs> um and they've dropped the word from their name now. Um although right. I guess they dropped it in core too. Anyway. Um if they want to do the work, I'm you know, fine with it as long as we're in agreement that, you know, the solution is is acceptable. Um, yes, I, I definitely that because we're gonna end up maintaining it. Um, and chances are they're never going to come back, and that's not completely fair. But uh, no, most likely no, they will I mean, not come been, back. They've they've been pretty responsive. I mean, yeah, yes, but I'll after it's done, I'm not sure if they're going to come back. But we'll see. Um, Sorry, I, I was thinking originally about the the .NET or package groups. Ah, but yeah, I just I, I'm I'm not thrilled with the solution of you know embedding an XE and and running it and. Um, you know, there there are alternatives, and I admit I have not done enough investigation to say, oh, why don't we just you know use upgrade code detection on the runtime packages? So, yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, they were that was challenging in the past because they were side by siding everything. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's the design. You know, honestly. If they did the work, we'd probably take it 3.14 because the work to do the bundle is not going to happen in 3.14, um, right. given the changes required for burn, as Sean so correctly pointed, reminded us. Yep. So um, this may be the best you could get in 3x. And if they're willing to do the work to bring the best solution for detecting um, .NET Core uh, to Wix 4 and then back to 3, it's probably reasonable to let that go. Okay. Probably is the way to go through it. Does that sound reasonable, Sean? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, next one. PDF user documentation. Um, we have the chum for three. Which is two of the three things they talk about. Is it not printable? A, a, an individual topic is printable. That's <laughs> yeah. not generally what you know people are yeah. looking for. All right. Uh, we have the chum for three, and I don't know that we're even going to bother doing this in four. So um, the chum? There are no plans for the chum. Yeah. No. Sorry. The PDF. Like. Like oh. generating a PDF from a website documentation and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have considered volunteering to do the chum, but even that is kind of like at the edge. I like the chum because I'm a fan of zero latency. Um, and theoretically, if we were going to do the chum, it's, you know, not all that much further um, to get to PDF, except that it kind of is because you know, Why would we, you do a PDF if you have a chum? Because you want stuff to be printable. Oh. Mm, okay. Really? Printable? Today? Computer documentation? That seems like a 
waste of paper. Well, I don't know. It, maybe it's easier I don't know. to read. I, I, I have been getting back into doing, you know, handwriting my, my notes during meetings. I mean, I've been working from home for nine and a half years and typing was, is always faster, but I take better notes and remember them better when I handwrite them, which is not the same thing as reading from no. a printed doc, but no. Because I understand that, because I used to take notes in college, not because I ever went back and wrote them, read them, but because the writing, writing the process them. of writing did, them actually did the trick. Yeah, because if I went back and looked at them later, I'm like, this is really terrible handwriting. Who did this? Um, but the act of writing, at least, forced, yeah. I guess it forced me to focus on what was being said. I don't know what it was. Yep. yep. Although, to be fair, I do get about the same when I'm typing in the one note I found, so well, wherever it goes. All right. Uh, no, we're not doing PDF. I mean, just. We have the chum, and in four, we might not even have the chum. And I, I get why you asked it, but we're just not doing that work. Someone could show up and do it, but we're not going to keep an issue around for that. I agree. Um, registry values are the same registry cause. That's a, this is a really bad exception. And you get it by using registry value with multi-string. Oh. The, the, this is two bugs. One, the, the tutorial. Um, hosted by our friends at Fire Giant, yeah. um, has some really bad authoring here. This should not. This is wrong. Right. So, right. so, so, Bob, knowing yeah. those guys, we should go write this down and fix this on our website. <laughs> yes. Now that said, th there is a second bug, which is that is a god awful exception. Yeah. All right. I mean, well, it's an exception, which is god awful. You should not get an exception from yes, you know, any no, kind of author. No, no. It's bad. So let's put this in 4.0, preview zero, and let's fix it. Because it should be straightforward yep. to fix. Well, I say that. Registry well, value, I'm multi -type. actually, I, I'd have to look. I don't think that you get the same thing in Wix four. Yeah, all right. Well, we're not fixing it. I took a so. quick look, and it it looks like the way this is authored would not pass muster in V in V four. Got it. But I will take it. Oh, oh, oh. This would happen with anything with multi-string, right? I mean, it doesn't matter what type. If you did this, presumably you'd get this problem no matter what. Um, maybe? I mean, there's a value which makes it legal, but... Um, again, in Wix 3, you, you can see it, right? It's It's... It's generating. It's going to generate yeah. the same ID because it's right. the the root key and name are all identical. Yep, and they um, are lied. And there should be a better error message. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, but I think I'd have to look. I I think that this actually fails in V4 because. Um, sorry, it fails the compile time. Okay. Um, AV4 because you can't have the the, the multi-string the, the the mix here mm. a multi-string and I have to look again I, I'm pretty sure that a multi-string registry value is not supposed to put value in the registry value element multi-string value was supposed is kind of the you know what's what's supposed to happen. But anyway, I, I took the bug. I will I will yeah. add a test. All right. So if we look, then oh, that's just going to go away. Now, Sean pointed something out to me that was interesting yesterday. So we're looking for things that have no label on them for us to triage, because when we triage them, then they get a label. Um, and he pointed out that sign all the things has no label. Yet it's not showing up in our no label thing query. Wow. Okay. So Bob's reaction is the same as mine. <laughs> Strange, huh? Um Yeah. What's different about this? What are these things? That I couldn't figure like it out. The other. <laughs> I 
the best case thing I can think of is maybe you labeled it and then deleted the label, but there's no record. I mean, that yeah. normally shows up in the little audit log. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, it's a little unnerving given how we depend on that, but I, uh, anyway, I happen to know that Bob's been working on the sign, all the things, and so that issue will go away and our little ghost will disappear, but it's kind of spooky. Well, actually, I haven't. I did the strong name signing, but I haven't done anything here. Oh, oh no, let's sign all the sign. things, right? This authentic code signing, not strong name yeah. signing. Yeah, it's really weird. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and get back to... Should we triage that? Triage the ghost? Oh, I guess we could. Um, yes, we need to do this, I guess. Let's put it in preview zero. It's going to be at the end of preview zero. Okay. Because it's going to be a build process thing that should really get worked out and standardized across the whole thing. Are you yeah. volunteering, or do you want someone else to volunteer? No, no, you can, I mean, sure, put it on me. I have everything else. We'll, we'll see. Have to, it's it's <laughs> that's honestly, kind of my it's, point. It's, it's near the bottom of things if, that may slip out if we have other more important things to do. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it would we need to do it before be... four. We definitely should put it in four. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It'd be but good I, to have that I, build process sorted out in preview zero. That's, that's right. We don't want to do it every period. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Fun. Okay. Okay. Great. So let's go talk about Wix for uh, design discussions. We've knocked a, a number of these already over the last uh, couple sessions, three sessions, two, three sessions, um, and made great progress. And, and I think that Sean and Bob have, well, I know Sean's taking care of the first one, I think, and Bob's got the second one. Um, and we have answers for all these. So, hey. Progress. So let's talk about the language uh, design changes for Bootstrap Replication, which is actually better said as Sean and I discussed it. The primary goal here is to support different architectures for Bootstrap Replications because Burn now can, the Wix tool set will now build bundles based off architecture that you've requested. Well, not quite yet. Well, then we need to uh, support uh, BAs then tracking to those architectures so that you can have well, the right thing happen. Um, so that's the key part of this. And there is a, uh, a whip for this that we were talking about. Um, trying to come up with a way to handle the case here where the bootstrapper application host in the past was just a singleton because it was all x86 it is now this id changes based off architecture and so we don't really want to have to have someone put a magical you know variable in here and have it switch between architectures and that kind of stuff it'd be better if we solved that when we do that we have to think about what does it mean for bootstrap application ref to then have these children under it because today the bootstrapper application element and the ref element are how you get payloads into the uh, the attached container the the what we call the UX container which is really the BA container which is the container that has all the stuff that runs the UI um, huh. so we so we need to decide how do we handle switching this ID based off architecture and still define how we want payloads to get put into uh, the BA container. And this document here goes through lots of different options of ways to do that. One of the things that we wanted to avoid was doing something like this where an extension like 
this Wix Managed Bootstrap Replication host, the extension then would say, oh, you're compiling for ARM. Let me make sure I go reference the ARM BA. And then, oh, hey, you want to have some child payloads? That makes sense, especially in the managed. You have to say what's your managed DLL that you want to load, and so on and so forth. Um, we, the challenge here is that this extension uh, would then have to know how to parse these payload elements that are part of the Wix namespace. So it'd have to switch from parsing its own content to parsing stuff that's in Wix. And that back and forth, one, we don't want them to have to duplicate all of the different things that are on payload, especially payload. I think it can get a little complicated. Um, and we also don't want to introduce a new thing in the compiler where an extension says, hey, I found something in your namespace. Let me go back and have the compiler try to parse that. Um, so that you can basically have an extension come in and then say, hey, I found more stuff that's part of the Wix namespace. Will the normal compiler please go and handle parsing this and then come back? Um, Although that wouldn't be you know, a bad thing. It, it needs an explicit design, which I don't really want to try to do in Wix 4 at this point. Right, right. It, and it's not as trivial as it's... You're like, oh, well, you should yeah, be able to call back. Absolutely not. Nowhere no. near as trivial as that because the compiler today is a recursive descent parser, and as part of that recursion, it passes context to itself, from itself, and it passes some context to the extensions, but it doesn't necessarily pass all of the context to the extensions so that they could turn around and pass the context back to the compiler to say, hey, this is yours, compile it. Not to mention there's a lot of other complicated things about, like, what happens if the extension says, hey, here's a fragment, compile this, in the middle of another fragment, which is just madness. Um, yeah, uh, that's insane. Ensuing. Yeah. So we'd have, so there's a lot to design for that. So the goal here is to not re, not implement uh, the, what I call it, the callback, the, the re-entrant compiler, where the compiler calls yeah, into the extension, yeah. the extension calls into the compiler. We don't want that, um, and we want to don't want to have them parsing payload or creating their own payload element and having to um, process it either. So those were the two things where Sean and I were missing, like we weren't communicating uh, correctly on those design goals, and as such, our the conversation was like all over the place. So knowing that as kind of the ground rules, we still then need to come up with some way of representing what's in the BA container and how to re how to allow well, on how to reference then bootstrap applications to say which one is the entry point. And Sean has tossed in a number of different examples of, or potential ways of doing that. For example, here the extension would be outside or just anywhere in the bundle per se that says, hey, I want, I am the Wix managed bootstrap application host. And then here is a new element in Wix 4 called the bootstrap application container, which is where you put your content for the bootstrap or application container. Um, so that's how you say, hey, here's your UI stuff where this Bootstrap application container in the end kind of behaves like the Bootstrap application part for having stuff in the, um, for putting things in the container without also declaring which thing is your, um, uh, your entry point for your BA. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah I, I like this. The, the advantage here is that um, the, there, sorry, there are advantages in having an extension provide details about the BA itself. Yeah, that, uh, this, that, I don't think there's really any question that this is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of a given of, yes, there's an extension and it will do a bunch of stuff, good stuff to define the theme that you get and reference the correct... Um, native code that will load your managed code in this case, all that kind of stuff. It does all that yeah, yeah. good stuff behind the scenes. And then... But it replaces today's bootstrapper application and bootstrapper application ref elements. Correct. Which is today how you specify the container. Correct. Well, it but, replaces the ref. It yeah. doesn't really replace right. the bootstrapper application. Doesn't it? No, it, it, it end, behind the scenes, it ends up creating a ref to a Wix lib that has the bootstrap replication defined inside of it. 
Oh, sure, sure, sure. Sorry, I'm, I'm um, maybe being a little yes. pedantic. It, mildly, yes, um, because the authoring never sees another one of those things. Correct. You do okay. not end up the the user does not end up authoring your Bootstrap replication. Or and if they did, the binder yeah. would have to error and be like, "No, you can't have two Bootstrap replications." Entry point. That'd be cool, though. <laughs> I think it does. I think it says there has to be one, right? There no. is. Yes. Okay. No, I think it was saying it'd be cool to have two BAs. Oh, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would not be cool. That would be insanity. I'm with Sean. All right. So that's one way. And then insane and cool. Those very. They're very close. So if um, you accept the Bootstrap replication container element, before I continue, one of the downsides of the Bootstrap replication container is that it introduces another concept that you're almost guaranteed to need because you're going to have this risk managed Bootstrap application host. And chances are you're going to need more files than that. And so you're going to need a Bootstrap application, application container. So you have to now know about the fact that there is this container that you put your stuff that you want to go with your Bootstrap application. Um, okay, so um, sorry, uh, my assumption here is that the the extension element the extension element can can pull in files via Bootstrap or application container ref. Is that correct? Yes, but these would be like your own custom, thing, like your well, images and other things that you need for in your for your UI. Right. Yeah. I guess I'm. I'm. Sorry. I'm working out. I'm working this out in my head. I don't. I don't do enough managed BAs to to really know. But um, even in Wix standard BA, if you want to add additional images to reference from your custom theme. Then you're going to say, hey, I don't remember what the element is, but hey, I want to use the West Standard BA. Here's my custom theme. And then, by the way, my theme needs these five images, so I need to go into Bootstrap Application Container and add payloads for those new images. Right. I'm I'm more thinking about the how could an extension add to the boost the BA container? Is it only via Bootstrap or application container ref? Is there a way to do this programmatically? Is I think where I'm where I'm getting to. Um, if we don't, we should have a method on the core, compiler core that helps you create payloads. I think. Is that already there, Sean? I mean, if you, I'm pretty sure if you create a payload and specify the magic string for the UX container's name, like that will put it in the container. Yeah. I'm not sure why you would want to do it programmatically, though. Well, here the license file needs to go into the, the BA That's, container. Yeah, that was that was the first thing. Th this element could, you know, based on theme, the value of theme, the value of license file could pre-populate. Because otherwise, I mean, if it can't, I mean, so lic license file is an arbitrary path. So you would have to list that under Bootstrap or Application Container, no? Well, I mean, the extension is the one that has the Bootstrap or Application element. So it can do whatever it wants in the authoring there. But how would it, uh, I'm missing, how would it, how would it insert the license file? It could, well, right now it's using like a Wix variable. It's just taking the value of that and sticking in the Wix variable. And right now there's a payload that that theme standard is pulling in a payload group. And one of the payloads in there, the value at the source file is from a Wix variable. Mm, OK. Um. I mean, it could have programmatically added a payload symbol with the right information. Yep, that's possible too. Sorry, could you repeat that? It could programmatically add a payload symbol, just setting the container ID to UX container or whatever it is, the magic string oh, is. Okay. 
Sorry. And then it would say source file equals that. And okay, I'm... you're 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 swapping magic variables is what it comes in or magic IDs um, to know that UX container is the you know, magic container ID or adding a magic symbol in the name of the of the Wix variable to get bind time behavior. I, I'm I'm sorry. You're you're triggering my my a long held problem or long thought about problem in my head that we have this mix of of extensions extension code that mixes in with Wix authoring that's shipped along with the Wix lib. Um, so I'm, I'm, I guess this is bringing up all sorts of memories of work that I've done in areas like this, not specifically this, but that, that, um, that bring this up, that, that, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of flexibility you could get if you could do everything programmatically. Well, I guess this issue is for the user, not the extension. Uh, it's for both, right? I mean, no. one way, no. I mean, this uh, this is really just for the, this issue is really just for the user. I mean, if we want to make it easier for extensions to add a, B, a UX container payload, we can just add another method to the parse helper or whatever. You know, create UX container p payload. Sure, 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 sure. But I mean, obviously, whatever solution we come up with affects how the extension works. Yeah, but we're more worried about the... I'm, I'm less worried about the extension because I'm pretty confident we can get that right. Um, well, we need to make sure we can still get it right. So far in the design here, we can get it right. I'm more worried about what the user sees in the language. And yeah, yeah of course, of course. Sorry, I'm, I'm yeah, this is important. I'm just. So in this case, I think the the extension creating a payload symbol and assigning it this license file with that path and using the the well-known moniker for the uh, BA container, the US container, um, uh, is the minor issue, or that's just what the extension would do, right? It would have to create that payload and put it in there. Magic string, notwithstanding, it's hidden within the extension, which at this point is written by us, right? The thing I'm more wondering about is if we need to specify more things, is more items in the container, is Bootstrap application container the best way to do it? And I'm not saying, and to be honest, I don't have a, another way of doing it. I haven't thought of another way of doing it. And I don't remember, Sean, I don't think you call out it. I think it's pretty much another element in one way or another, right? Oh, yeah. No. Sorry, the other way um, that we discussed was putting an attribute on the payload, right? That said, right. this payload goes into the Bootstrap application container. And I think we agreed in the emails that that created some really weird scenarios where, yeah, a payload would suddenly jump out of wherever it was defined and into the application container, which was more confusing than having a wrapper around the Bootstrap application container that defined things that go into that. So today we have a strongly typed element for Wix standard BA. Yep. Um, it works as being parented to Bootstrap application ref, which yep. requires an ID. Yep. Which is a little weird. Yep. Because it might be handy if we could, you know, move the ID onto the Wix standard Bootstrap application yep. element name. Yep. And that's in, um, we're going to get to that part in here. Oh. Um, when we get down. Okay. Farther. Yes, I agree. Everything you said is absolutely yes, yes, yes. You are tripping down the line of, man, this is kind of weird. Why is there's all these things that have to be lined up just right for it to work correctly? Well, I guess, and, and tell me to shut up if this is where we're going. Why do we need Bootstrapper application container if we already have Bootstrapper application? Ah, so let's go. All right. 
so here's Bootstrap Application Container, the idea here, not that we're settled on it, but the idea here is a clear way of saying these payloads go in this container, hopefully it's then clear, once you know what a Bootstrap Application Container is, that the payloads go there. Um, we'll come back and talk about this alternative or enhancement to that, because that's what that is. Um, we need to then look, we don't want to do the suffix thing, because um, that was scary. Here, the managed bootstrap application host moved under the bootstrap application container. We can discuss which way is better there. Where does the bootstrap or application element show up here? Uh, I thought there was one that had the bootstrap application. Uh, option three had bootstrapper application ref without an ID. Right, this basically just says bootstrapper application ref is the way that you say. Yeah, that, yeah, a ref without an ID always looks weird. Um, I thought it was here, but maybe I... What were you looking for? I was looking for the one that said, if you're not using managed bootstrapper application and you're not using... Um, with standard BA, you're writing your own from scratch, from the very beginning, what does that authoring look like? And I thought there was an example in here, but maybe I... It, it is in the option two. It's showing how the Wix managed BA host is actually defined. Yeah, option one. I need these bolded or something so I can find them faster. Okay. So that's... I guess it's... Yeah, okay. This is, I skipped over this as the alternative that we didn't want with the suffix on it. But this is how it's defined. Okay, right. You're right, Sean. So um, there will still need to be a bootstrap or application element that would declare the um, DLL that gets loaded by burn. We will need that. Um, historically that bootstrapper application has also allowed you to put payloads underneath it, or payload groups, same thing, basically. Payloads under it to say these will end up in the bootstrapper application container. That was the way to do it. And of course you get an ID. One idea would be to make this not have children, right? So you always use bootstrapper application container to list the payloads that go with it, and this bootstrap application would then only define the ID so you can reference this thing. And then the source file that is the DLL that gets loaded by burn. How do, so are you saying you need a bootstrapper application and a bootstrapper application container? That would be one option. I'm not saying we should. I'd say that would be one okay. option. Right. I, I so not treat right now. Bootstrap application implicitly acts like a bootstrap application container. Would implicitly act like a bootstrap application container because it can contain payloads that puts these payloads into the bootstrap application container. Right. My so I guess my question before was, um, what's wrong with the the model that we have today for Wix standard bootstrapper application, which is it comes under a bootstrapper application, application ref in this case, and is used to configure the, the options for Wixander BA. What if you extend that? What if bootstrapper application have the same thing where the element, sorry, let me back up. I think it's a little weird in some of the other options that the element is under bundle. The, uh, the the extension element to define your BA is under bundle rather than under something that contains the words bootstrapper application. Okay. I'm so that, what if bootstrapper that... application kept its current job of being a – of defining the BA as well as the BA container? The problem so, is – that it needs the source file on it that is the entry point. Right. And that will differ by platform, as this shows, which yep. means it will have a suffix. And so there will be a there will be N of these bootstrapper applications 
or each platform we support. Three, right. I'm sorry. suggesting that I guess I'm suggesting we overload Bootstrap or application. So let's say you can omit ID and source file. Oh, okay. And then your extension element could supply them. Mm. How? An exercise left to the reader. Huh. Um. I get, sorry, to me, I guess, that's I, just I'm, saying I'm looking... that bootstrapper application, that means don't introduce bootstrapper application container and just right. continue to use bootstrapper application as the way of saying, here's stuff that goes in, here's the way that you put stuff in your container, and that this source file is optional. When you specify it, it's the one that defines the entry point for the VA. I, I'm suggesting that introducing another element to do what an existing element does seems weird. The, the, the important part for me that Bootstrap application container does is it removes this source file. Right. I'm suggesting that's, we that's could do that on our own. So you'd be able to just define a Bootstrap application Without no, a source I'm, I'm, file, that would with, essentially be oh, hey, without an ID. Yeah, and, and maybe even without an ID, sure. And if yeah. you if you then, if it's in that fragment, then the content of that bootstrap application essentially is just stuff that goes in the container. Yes, and I'm assuming here that there is an extension element that supplies the the data that's necessary. Yeah. All right. Let me see if I can. Well, how does a user to find their own BA then? Well, if they have, okay. So, right. so I have the ability is, to is display multi -flat, Notepad. Right? So I'm going to try to bring up Notepad here. All right. Hopefully, all of you on the stream can see that. It's probably a little big for the chat. All right. Let's see. If... Yeah, I can see the Notepad in the stream. All right. You guys talk. I'm just trying to get this written down as options. So the the primary, as I understand it, this is all about multi architecture, right? Right. Okay. So I'm assuming that in in what you're discussing here, the extension element um, already has to do some magic to supply the different architectures. Is that fair? Right. It's going to just do a simple ref to the correct ID. Um, based on the, the platform being compiled for. Right. Okay. Um, so, okay, again, I'm, I'm struggling with the fact that this is also something you could do without a library. Um, but we can assume that it could still do that. Um, and so your question was, how would someone do it to find their own? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, the, core, the core problem is the bootstrapper application is overloaded today. It's doing the job of defining what goes into the container while also doing the job of specifying which DLL yeah. that should be loaded by burn. Um, yes, I agree. So, and I think that's a fine thing for it to do. <laughs> I guess it's my, um, my point, as long as we can, as long as keep we... it overloaded. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, I would keep it overloaded because um, it, it it's it's overloaded, but most people don't care. Most people don't see the overload. Most people don't don't need the the two concepts to be separate at the at the authoring level. Right. I'm completely happy for us to um, to hide complexity where we can by overloading. 
I don't understand how the extension can change the architecture of the BA. That exercise left to the reader is like what we're talking, what we need to decide, basically. Well, yeah, I guess I don't. I, it's already going to do simple ref, right? I, I guess I don't. I don't understand the problem. The an, ex, an extension element has access to the current platform, so it can already do that, right? Well, today you can't have Bootstrap or application ref without an ID. Well. So we fix that. So we just take the ID off Bootstrap application ref. I'm thinking Bootstrap application because I agree with Rob. Seeing a ref without an ID is weird. Whereas seeing Bootstrap application as an element, it's like, oh, I am now describing the Bootstrap application. Um, so if the element, so. so for example, the ID is meaningless, right? If you have this extension element, the ID is meaningless. You don't need the ID. Well, the way it works today is bootstrap applica application, if it has source file on it, then that's the BADLL. Otherwise, right. the very first payload it finds yeah. is the BADLL. Oh, I forgot about that right. part. Right, and I agree that we need to we need to fix that, and I'm suggesting that that can be um, that that responsibility can fall to the extension. So you're kind of you want Bootstrap application to be specified multiple times in a bundle, and they nope, can't. No, no, no. Well, then how is the extension going to specify? which DLL is the BA. So there would be bootstrapper application authoring in the extension library. With the bootstrapper application element, <laughs> they would have to use that. Otherwise, what elements are they going to use? They is the extension author. They can get, they can tolerate a little bit of punishment and confusion. The <laughs> The user's perspective, they see one bootstrapper application element unadorned, no attributes, and then a, an extension element, an element that is strongly typed and simplifies all the payloads that they don't actually care about. But then uh, the language is allowing the bundle to have multiple bootstrap application elements then. Um because it'll be defined once in the user's code and once in the extension's code. Okay, sure, sure. So I think I've written down what you guys have been describing. Um, we'll start at the top. One, if you're just doing a plain BA, if we keep the bootstrap application concept, I think we're keeping that. It's the way of specifying your DLL. That's pretty straightforward. And we've said, let's keep the payloads as a way of putting content into it. This one, I don't think there's much contention about. Um, and of course, you can put an ID on this if you want or not. Right? I don't think that's, that's not contentious, right? I, yeah. That's the simplest case, right? So when using like MBA or Wix MBA, the same thing. Um, then what I've heard Bob say is let's allow us to use bootstrap application with no ID and no source file on it, put the extension either under it. In this example, the only difference is I put that as a peer to the bootstrap application. That's a very, we need to decide that, but that's a minor, mostly minor cosmetic difference. Um, this Wix managed Wix bootstrap application host does all the work to then go and create a reference it does what it needs to do and then create a reference over here to like the ball Wix lib that has the correct, again, another bootstrap application in it that then pulls in the correct MBA host. And then this bootstrap application, being bootstrap application, can put these two in there, or put these two payloads as part of the bootstrap application container, right? This example, as I said before, is the same except the manage bootstrap application host definition is a peer of bootstrap application. This third example, the difference is 
I renamed the bootstrap application that has no uh, source, cannot have source file on it to a different element name because then we'd be able to say this cannot have, um, uh, you cannot have, uh, you cannot use this to define the entry point to the bootstrap application. So that's what this element would give us. And again, this could be done like that if we prefer. Um, I get, from my perspective, I care more about the, what the user sees. Yep. Um, so I'd rather I'd rather reserve Bootstrap or application, which you know is already 84 characters long, um, <laughs> rather than adding yet another word to it. Um, so for example, so for example, uh, the problem of having multiple Bootstrap or application symbols in 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 your view, I would rather say that ball ball.wixlib should use Bootstrap or application container or some other name. Um, but he's the one that defines the BA entry point. He is the one that has source file on it. And when you use this, no other Bootstrap application that you use can have source file on it. Because otherwise you end up with two BAs. Okay. My, my my concern, it turns out, boils down entirely to the naming. Yep. I I like the idea of Bootstrap or application as being something the user sees, and Bootstrap or application anything else being something that the extension author sees. So if um, we named it entry point for the one, I, I, at, I, at this point, I, I'm given no I'm, other words. I mean, essentially push the thing that when you're going to define your own BA, make that one longer than the container one. Yeah. It's it's about naming and it's about parenting. I think it's actually a little bit more than cosmetic. I like the idea of having a bootstrapper application section in your authoring um, that parents everything related to your BA. So, for example, so outright, I prefer number one and number three over number two. I like the grouping of, of putting everything under Bootstrap or application. Other than that, it's all about naming. Okay, so here's the problem with, this is the error condition. This ends up colliding with the fact that, oh, I can't multi-select, um, this, right? These two, if this is, sorry, if this is still called, if we use bootstrap application only, then these two guy this creates a collision with that. Sure. And and given that people often fill out or try to fill out every um, attribute on an element, for better or worse, usually for worse, that's the thing that I've worried about there. Okay, but they're not going to know what the hell to put there. So well, I, I thought I thought we were talking about not allowing source file on bootstrap application and creating this new element. Well, I, I, I want it, if we don't create the new element for the entry point, Sean, yes, then this creates a problem. I just want to bring it back. If we create a new, a new element for defining the entry point, I think that gets what Bob wants and it solves the problem that I was worried about too. Um, it essentially makes bootstrap application the same as the concept of bootstrap application container. Right. Um, yeah, so so we've been talking about my option two, just with different names. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes, and sorry, that that's where I, I I said it came down to. This is all about naming for me. Yes, one hundred percent agree, Sean. It's about getting the right words for these things. But it is, I, I felt like you had all the options in here. All we had to do is put the correct words in all the places. So like where you are right now, that would be Bootstrap application at the top. And then below that would be the new element name, Bootstrap or application entry point. And yeah, everything would, else would be just like what we talked about. Yeah. This would be Bootstrap or application entry point, for lack of a better name right now. Wait, wait, then, that's the V3. Oh, sorry. You're also showing Notepad. No. Oh. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So anyway, it, it's about putting the entry point. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is very much like what you described in your option two of your spec, Sean. And it's just a matter of us, I think, whittling down the names. And also, do we have a preference where this extension lives? Um, 
that's a that's a yeah, yeah. that's a very minor it's a very simple or let me say that it's a very simple change to put it in either place it's just a language question um, it's more a language question than it is a mechanical how hard is it to do um, do we have a so preference my, my option two is having it underneath right and it sounds like that's what we want I, I like I, that idea, and the truth is, I I really so we prefer. Guess, just so I'm clear, we prefer ex1 over ex2 here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and I can see where Bob's coming from. Let's choose Bootstrap Replication, and then let's go make something else the longer name. And I don't know if Entry Point's the right name for it, but I don't either. And and partly I I'm I'm kind of backtracking. I don't know that I want to change the behavior because it's you know it's a non most people aren't going to see this, right? Most people today, they use an extension to to point to their stuff. So they have a bootstrapper application ref that points to MBA or Wix standard BA. Yep. And, you know, so that's why I'm I'm like, I really, I prefer bootstrapper application as what the user sees and something else for what, you know, primarily what we see when we're working in, in the ball extension. Um, but I also would include other people who are developing extensions like this. Yep. Um, now that said, is it really worth it? And I would probably, you know, uh, I would, I would argue if, if we need to introduce an, a new element, let's introduce a new element and leave the old one the same. I was coming at it from the, can we successfully overload? I think that's possible. And, but I'm maybe very worried the about this. The, if we leave the attribute on there, people are going to try to figure out how to specify it. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't want to overload it. Okay, there you go. Problem solved. And, um, and I'm in the in the chain in the email chain. I also was pointing out that pack all the exe package, MSI package, they're all overloaded in the same way. And I would actually prefer to do something similar there. Oh, to separate out payloads. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, not that long ago. Well, actually, long ago and ongoing for quite a while. Um, we have this problem with XE packages. Mostly uh, comes up around the .NET framework, which is what we really want is the the metadata about the package to be separate from the payload because that would solve the problems we have today of of remote payloads and um, people deciding to copy the the authoring and paste it into their into their project to change the behavior of the payloads. So I completely agree, and this is where it would be we we have to figure out how you reference these packages without their payloads, so you can replace the payloads. But I think that's a different meeting. You're, you're, this is like bringing up key path. Kind of, sort of, yeah, yeah. It's very much like key path. This is this is the idea of the partial component. Yeah, but not just that. If you guys want, what I'm hearing is you want to be able to say, you don't want Bootstrap application entry point to act like a payload because it does today. I mean, Bootstrap app. What we're, what we're currently calling entry point acts like a payload because this ends up be turning into a payload for you automatically. Well, no, I, I'd argue this is, that's not a problem. The problem is if you tried to overload Bootstrap or application, then it becomes more difficult to separate out the payload of the BA um, from the payloads that you're adding to the BA. So the, the BA payload is basically the BA DLL. And that that's tied, you know, pretty tightly to the BA or to Bootstrapper application or Bootstrapper application entry point, whatever. Yeah. Um, but that's the BA. But even with with MBA and Wix standard BA, you're adding images and licenses and whatever, and those are not tied to the BA. Yeah, Which is yeah. why today we have Bootstrapper application ref, and that works, you know, 
that brings in Wix standard BA and the themes and whatnot, uh, or a theme, brings in MBA, the prereq stuff as well. Sorry, not Wix standard BA. MBA, Bootstrap or Application Ref, brings in those. I guess what I was trying to say is like a bundle has a bootstrap application. And then as part of that bootstrap application, there's the entry point DLL and there's all the rest of the support files. So we, what I'm hoping is we can separate where you have to use something special to declare something as the entry point and then all the rest are just support files. And that's why I, I like I, I like the idea that the you know the extension is under a, a BA named element because I think that that it, it commingles it lets the extension element provide the BA DLL um, and then the the support files or peers. So I'm I'm trying to capture or understand what Sean's asking for. I, I, I'm, are you thinking like, like that? I mean, it could, it could be that, or it could be just a sep a new element. Or, like the, or the strap application entry point element that we were talking about. Or this one. Something like that. Yeah. So if you have your own custom BA, that's how you'd do it. Or you would use an extension element to specify what the BA you want. And the extension could identify the DLL as the entry point. Right. Via some magic parse helper method. Well, so no, essentially, this, the same. this attribute moves to an, another element, and then everything else is the same. Uh, yeah. Is it better to have a separate element? Maybe. So that you don't accidentally set entry point equals yes on two of these, because that obviously doesn't make any sense. But that we could get to compiled then, uh, bind time. Uh, yes. That does not yeah, work. I'm not a fan of the attribute. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I was just, I'm putting it there as kind of like, it helps me see it sometimes. So this gets, this may get closer to what Bob wanted was well, I mean, we're slightly. It, it's base. It's essentially saying I'm thinking like from Wix convert terms. It sees you know bootstrap application and it sees source file. And it's like oh, you specify source file here. Guess what? That gets moved to the next child element, and it's called something. Whatever we name it. Yeah. Anytime we create a new thing, we have to come up with a name for it. But um, then everything else works the same. And the ball authoring down here would be. Well, you still need that, kind of. It's also off the screen. I'll get there. I'll bring it back. There we go. Okay. So this source file becomes this source file. That's a really long name. <laughs> Although to Bob's point, not many people ever see it. So this would be the way of defining the MBA host as the entry point underneath this bootstrap application. And in this case, it would end up creating a ref. I mean, in the end, it's the same. This creates the same ref to this thing. The trick is that the entry point has moved off of the attribute um, 
and onto the um, right. That's the difference. Yep. Although technically in V3 you could also implicitly declare it as the first playload. Just by being first in document order, right? I don't remember which order. <laughs> it must be first in document order. I can't imagine we can do anything else. Right. Um, all right. This is this is fine. So this base. What did we do? Instead of having the specially named Bootstrap application with a special um, set of Bootstrap application with the source file um, being the magic and introducing a new element called Bootstrap application container, we're doing the other way around where we are defining, uh, we are removing source file from Bootstrap application. So it acts more like the container and we're creating a new element to house the entry point for the bootstrap application. Yeah. I mean, it really is my option too with different names. Yeah, no, I, I, I your option, you, I think you covered all the options. The things that we're struggling with was the naming of, what do we name these things? Um, that was the, the hard part, getting people on the same page of the naming. Um, do we have a name for this element? Honestly, given that it's new, it's the easiest thing for us to change a few times. Um, well, it's, um, I'm trying to imagine, um, would it ever be under anything other than bootstrap or application? It doesn't make sense even for bootstrap or application wrap, right? It could be a payload group, theoretically. Mm. <laughs> yes, it, theoretically it could. I'm not sure I'm down with that. <laughs> yeah, I, so, well, the reason I was going there is if it's always under bootstrap or application, then we can call it entry point. That would be, yeah, clearly scoped to bootstrap or application. It's a little trickier if we allow it as part of a payload group um, because then it's like actually no I'm going to no <laughs> I agree with Rob I'm going to come down on the side of entry point can only appear under bootstrap or application um, because otherwise you have you have the scenario where you could put an entry point entry into a payload group that appears under an MSI package or an XE package <laughs> And I don't think it makes sense under a ref either. No. It's just no. like, no, you're referring something else. Well, then go put it in the thing you ref. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, actually, in that case, I see. The interesting thing then is that bootstrap, bootstrap or application ref is only useful if you're going to reference something um, that has an entry point in it. Otherwise, it's a bootstrap or application ref is the same as a payload group ref. Yeah, babe, yeah. So the bootstrap application ref, yeah, yeah, it's basically a payload group ref, except that it can appear at the top and it can have children. Yeah, so the only time it makes sense is if you're going to refer to a bootstrap application that has an entry point in it. So you do get in this weird situation where you could have a bootstrap application ref to a bootstrap application that has no entry point in it, that just has payloads in it, and, well, I guess it, it, that just has payloads, and at that point, you just recreate a payload group. Um, so, so, yes, you can do that. Uh, but you could also then create a bootstrap application ref to something that has, like, the managed bootstrap application, and it would be your way of saying yeah, here's I've written this standard BA for many of my bundles. I've no, sorry, I've ma I've written this managed BA for many of my bundles. I put it off into a separate library, and then I do bootstrap application ref ID my managed BA, and then payloads underneath that to change you know whatever can be customized as your BA can be customized, different images or whatever, and that works out really well. I think. You 
would have to vary your IDs by architecture as well. For managed code? Yeah, the, there's a there's a native part of MBA core. Right, but I would refer to the extension. So the extension hopefully would make that decision for me. Oh, if it was in a lib though. Yeah. And it was pre-built, you're right. So it wouldn't work in a lib as well. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, no, I, I mean, that's, yeah, that's fine. If you were to put it in a lib, you'd have that problem. If you put it just in your code, then it wouldn't be a problem. Right. And you just reft that file, I guess. And again, I'm a little more comfortable. Someone, someone who's more than providing their own BA, um, and and not relying on ball extension elements. I'm okay, you know, exposing them to some of the the hairier bits. This is not the hardest part that they have facing them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they have a whole BA to write. So. Yeah. Yep. And they're going to have to manage the multiple architectures. Uh, Unless they choose, you know, oh, well, no, my BA is x86. That's been fine for years. I'll keep it that way. Yeah. And then until server changes that, or they have to worry about ARM, which is where yeah, we're at today. Arm. It's four. Yep. Yay. Um, all right. So the end result is I think we have names for things, and we have the new element in here is for defining the um, the main, the, the entry point into the BA. I don't know that entry point is the right answer. It's just the first word that came to my mind. Um, but like I said, we can, we can also tweak that a little bit as the thing's under development. Yeah. Hey, we should call it Bootstrap or Application. Yes, I know. That's what I was thinking. Application <laughs> under Bootstrap or application is the entry point. Right. <laughs> that can have a Bootstrap That's application good. under it that has a... No, no. <laughs> nope, um, nope, just one level of recursion. Uh, yeah. No, we should call it the Bootstrap application. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that wins. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the other one is DLL, but I'm not, I don't really like that. Yeah. Uh, we can, we can, I, we, now that we know what this thing is, I think we can um, discuss the names later until we finally settle on it. Um, but I think this is the answer. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I knew this would be the big one. All right. I'm going to be very happy to finally check this thing off the list. Um, I think it's probably one of the larger language design changes in Wix 4. Other things, things people want to talk about, discuss, uh, thinking about going on out there. And the answer no is completely fine because we're almost to 11 o'clock. Going, going, gone. All right, I think we're going to call it. Uh, this is a full thing. I'm very glad for us to have gotten through that discussion. That was good. Come up with a good answer. Feel feel pretty good about that. Um, and that should unblock the rest of the multi-architecture multi um, burn support. Yay. Um, yay, ARM, I guess. So uh, I think we'll be back in two weeks. Is that Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. Oh. Thanksgiving. That's Thanksgiving. You know what? We're going to skip next week. We'll be back in four weeks, I think, which says right now December 10th. I think that'll work given the way things are going right now, how quiet they are, and I don't expect them to pick up over the holidays here. Uh, we'll do this again on December 10th. So back in four weeks. Sounds good, guys? Thanks for me. Yeah. All right. So we'll be back in four weeks. Do this all again. We'll triage. Hopefully we'll have some stuff. And maybe in four weeks we'll have uh, we'll be talking about what's next in Wix 4, uh, Preview 0, and things like that. So until then, everyone have a good one. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.